So our viewer question today, uh, they would like to know, well, they've asked, um, they'd love to get your advice on how a plant-based diet can help with candida. They say there are some anti-candida diets, but those really limit veggies and recommend no fruits, and no nuts and seeds. And this seems so restrictive. Is there any other way? Oh, I would think so. But this is a complex question with a number of levels. Uh, the, uh, the thing about candida, been around for millions of years, and since I came into the natural food health scene 40 years ago, Candida has been hovering around, oh, we got candida, uh, that's the cause of your, and fill in the blank, whether it's fatigue or skin problems or diarrhea or uh, asthma, whatever, no, it's candida, candida. Uh, and it faded into the background for a while. Uh, it was really powerful back in the 80s. There were several books written on, on, the, on candida. Uh, and then other, uh, uh, health issues took its place of uh, Epstein-Barr virus and hypoglycemia and Lyme disease. And, and so candida kind of faded into the background, but now it's uh, more coming back when uh, people can't find an answer to their health problems. Uh, and I think in many ways, candida is an innocent bystander. In other words, all of us have candida in and on our bodies. You can culture candida off everybody's mouth, out of everybody's rectum, uh, probably under everybody's armpit. It's a common commensal organism. It's part of our microbiome that in, inhabits us, in us and on us. And there's, you know, no one gets rid of candida. It, it's always there and, and probably playing an important role in the microbial balance uh, in our, these very complex systems uh, that uh, we, we interact with, part of our, our balance and health. So as far as you're getting rid of candida, one, I've got to be convinced that it really is a problem in this particular person. And there's not some other reason going on. The person uh, has an anemia from heavy menstrual periods. I'm talking about a person who's fatigued or uh, itchy, or they may have a leaky gut from eating too much sugar and uh, they've even got increased gut permeability. It has nothing to do with candida, but there are, there are other reasons, uh, but people are quick to blame candida. Uh, when really it might just be not enough sleep, uh, an imbalanced diet, um, a B12 deficiency, remediable issues on a plant-based diet that people have let slip, and, and ah, it's candida is the problem, when candida is just an innocent bystander there. Now, if someone has obvious candida symptoms, they open their mouth and they got big white patches on their tongue and on their cheek and the roof of their mouth. Uh, the, the, the bathroom or stool is coated with a white uh, layer over it uh, and they have gross intestinal candidiasis or oral candida. Fair enough. Um, you know, the, there's, there's an issue here that's often associated with a medical issue, either a depressed immune system or you know, taking prednisone or some immunosuppressive agent. Um, but in those cases, yes, absolute candida can be an issue. Uh, but most folks, you know, I would need to at least see a stool specimen with a four plus growth of candida in it uh, to be really concerned that it's candida really is the problem. That said, if your diet is so junky and so full of sugars that uh, not only candida is overgrowing, but so is every other evil microbe that you have down your gut. Uh, the lesson from the candida is clean up your diet for all sorts of reasons beyond the candida uh, because you're feeding other microbes that are not favorable and you're probably uh, not giving your body the nutrients it deserves. So again, is your diet really whole food plant-based? Are you really eating those salads, those vegetable soups, those steamed veggies? If you are, there's nothing really in those three foods, soup, salads, and steamed vegetables. There's nothing here that's going to feed candida. That's a pretty low sugar diet right there. Um, the uh, steamed greens and yellow vegetables, which should be on your plate pretty much every lunch and dinner, uh, are not going to feed candida. Um, 
the whole grains uh, should not feed candida, especially the low glycemic grains like quinoa, millet, buckwheat, that shouldn't. The legumes with their resistant starches that don't even break down till they get to the colon, um, um, and those are beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, that's not going to feed candida. So it's really the, the junk foods, uh, it's the granola bars and the sugary drinks and the, uh, and the vegan baked goods, that kind of stuff will feed candida. Don't eat those, you should eat them anyway. Uh, so again, the, the candida is a marker of a bad diet, but it's not the cause of the problem. And to severely restrict your diet, to think you can't have an apple because it's going to make your candida work, is just silly. Uh, now, these whole fruits, they're mostly fiber and water. When you eat an apple, mostly fiber and water. The amount of actual sugar in it is so small, and it, it probably doesn't even make it down past your first couple of feet of small intestine. It's, they're, they're broken down, absorbed, and they're in your liver for metabolism before they cause any mischief further down the GI tract. Uh, and even the folks that eat these high fruit diets, they're the ones that cause, they have the greatest concern, the fruit, so-called fruitarians, the 30 bananas a day folks. And there are, there is such a website, 30 bananas a day. And the folks who are eating fruit, 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 fruit. Those folks, I would get concerned about a candida overgrowth. And I see some of those folks don't look so great. Uh, and their skin's kind of pale and they just don't look like really healthy folks on these high, high fruit diets. And those folks, I think, if you cultured their stool, you'd find a pretty hefty candida overgrowth. But, uh, but that, to me, is an unbalanced diet. Uh, but to, but uh, if you are eating the standard whole food plant-based diet with lots of veggies, etc., that to think that, oh, I can't have a banana because it's going to make my candida worse. Uh, again, I don't think there's any solid nutritional reason for that. Plus, it takes the joy out of eating. Uh, the, uh, the, it's the whole food stream moving through your GI tract. And if the majority of it is <clears throat> our, our whole grains and legumes and fruits and vegetables, um, candida is, is going to maintain its standard role, a meek little bystander down in your microbiome that really isn't causing any problem. So. Uh, if someone has laid that diagnosis on you, or you can show me the money, show me the proof, doctor. Um, wh wh on what are you, what are you basing that diagnosis? Because bef before you're asking me to change my diet uh, or do or take some supplement, or whatever, I want to see on a lab, on a culture report somewhere that I've got a candida overgrowth. Uh, if not. Um, Assuming you're eating that, again, that exemplary whole food plant-based diet, uh, I don't think uh, you need to go chasing candida. Your, your body will know how to keep that in balance for you with, uh, with that healthy food stream going down your, your GI tract from healthy food choices. So leave candida off the hook. Uh, if you've got, and if you've got a clinical reason, then find out why. So if you've got a clinical, you've got enough candida that it shows up on a lab test, then, then you need to talk to your doc about why this has happened, you know, what's unbalanced in your food or your immune system, because that really does need attention. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here, announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.